Hey crew, it's Bit, and I'm back with another Anuma List. We're back with Bitcast, and today we're going to be digging into the 6th and 7th tablet, probably the epilogue as well, and we're just going to go ahead and dive in. We've already talked about the formation of the solar system, in my opinion, is what is recorded from 1 through 5, and here in 6, things get different. Here in 6, it becomes terrestrial. Here in 6, the translations get a whole lot different too. So let's go ahead and dig in and see what's going on with the 6th tablet, right? We're going to do like we did before, and we're going to read the one on the left all the way through. It is very short this time, and then we will go through the, the one on the right, and we'll talk about it as we go along. But there is a significant difference between the two. This one right here is exactly this long, however long it is that y'all see it. Well, I think the bottom might be cut off for y'all, but the one on the right is not the same length. This is the same tablet. This is supposed to be the same tablet anyway. Uh, that's one of the problems with doing interest in that research and trying to figure out things on your own is that the the it can conflict itself. You it's it's hard to be discerning, right? So we just try to do the best we can and muddle through and see where the knowledge takes us. Then Marduk bird beard Marduk heard the word of the gods. His heart prompted him and he devised a cunning plan. He opened his mouth and unto Yah he spoke. That which he conceived in his heart he imparted unto him. My blood I will take and bone I will fashion. I will make man. That man may, I will create man who shall inhabit the earth. That the service of the gods may be established and that their shrines may be built. But I will alter the ways of the gods and I shall change their, and I will change their paths. Together they shall be oppressed and unto evil shall they. And Yah answered and, and spake the words. The other gods I have changed. And one shall be destroyed, and men will I, and the gods, and they. The rest of the tablet is wanting, with the exception of the last few lines of the tablet, which read as follows. They rejoiced in Upsikiknaku. I'm going to get that word eventually. They sat in their dwelling. Of the heroic son, their avenger, they cried, We, whom he succored. They seated themselves in the assembly. They named him. They all cried aloud. They exalted him. Okay, so for what has been a fairly like stick to it true translator, this is the entirety of Tablet Six. For the one that extrapolates a little bit, this is significantly longer. There's significant details in here that are not in the other one. I don't know which one's right. I don't have the actual tablets. I can't actually translate it myself. I have to rely on somebody else translating. I intentionally spoke or chose not to do Danikin's book on this or because uh, a lot of people know that mythology and know that lore and this is not exactly the same even though it's mostly the same <laughs> right and so uh, for this one on the on the right we're gonna go ahead and read through here and we will stop and discuss it a little bit but like I don't know what to take from it this appears to be when the gods decided to make man that's what I'm going to try to extrapolate from this right in there. In their decision to make man, they decide to get rid of one of them in order to do that. And now that Marduk has heard what it is the gods are saying, he has moved to the desire with desire to create a work of consummate art. He told Yah the deep thought in his heart. Blood to blood I join, blood to bone I join from an original thing. Its name is man, aboriginal man, is mine in making. All his occupations are faithful service. The gods will, that fell will have rest. I will subtly alter their operations, divided companies, equally blessed. Now, this is, a lot of people believe that this is the Anunnaki. Uh, as the fallen who have come and they're doing labor, extracting gold, that whole storyline there, right? Well, this is somewhat tied into that, but we really don't see the same translating across the two. And this is extrapolating more along that line, whereas the other one was just they decided to make gods in order to make temples to the gods. Uh, and to them, the gods are the planet, right? Like Stonehenge would be the temple because it is monumenting the, the planets and the stars. 
the, the pyramids would be the temples because it is monumenting the, the layout of the stars. And so that's, that seems to be what's there. But for here, the service seems to be to do the things that, that the gods need done. Whereas before, in all the other tablets, it appeared to me to be these gods are the planet in heaven. And we're talking about the formation of the, the solar system. Now we're talking about here on earth. And all of a sudden the gods, gods are personified in this one tablet. Oh. And all of his occupation is faithful service that gods will, that fell have rest. I will subtly alter their operations, divided companies, equally blessed. Yah answered with carefully chosen words, completing the, completing the plan for God's comfort. He said to Marduk, Let one of the kindred be taken. Only one need die for the new creation. Bring the gods together in the great assembly. There let the guilty die, so the rest may live. And Marduk called the great gods to the synod. He presided courteously, gave instructions, and all of them listened with grave attention. The king speaks on the re to the rebel gods. Declare on your oath, if ever before you spoke truth, who instigated rebellion? Who stirred up Tiamat? Who led the battle? Let the instigator of war be handed over. Guilt and retribution are on him, and peace will be yours forever. Why does he have to ask this, right? This is Marduk. Marduk went into battle and defeated Tiamat and her champion, Kingu. And so why does he have to go and ask them? Maybe there is something going on on a solar on a solar system level that includes the capturing of Kingu and the taming of Kingu, which we're about to see. Uh, and maybe it's as simple as that, right? Maybe it is uh, really like they took the blood from the planet and made us. Like maybe that's where our oxygen came from. Maybe so. I don't know. And so. Uh, the great gods answered, the Lord of the universe, the king and counselor of gods. It was Kingu who instigated rebellion. He stirred up the sea of bitterness and led the battle for her. They declared him guilty. They bound him and held him down in front of Yah. They cut his arteries, and from his blood they created man. And Yah imposed his servitude. When it was done, when Yah in his wisdom had created man and man's burden, this thing was past comprehension. This marvelous subtlety conceived by Marduk, and executed by Nidibud. Then Marduk, as king, divided the gods, one host above, below, and another above. Three hundred above for the watchers of heaven, watchers of the law of Anu, five times sixty for earth, six hundred gods between heaven and earth. That's interesting. right? So he divided the gods, one host below and another above. Three hundred above for the watchers of heaven, the watchers of the law of Anu. Five times sixty for earth. Six hundred gods between. So five times sixty would be three hundred. And so three hundred above, three hundred below. So that would be... There's not three hundred planets. Like, there's not even, I don't think, a sum total of three hundred planets and moons together. So... That would have to be including something else. Maybe it is talking specifically about constellations here and the stars therein. That seems that seems to fit a lot better. The planets would be considered part of that, that is for sure. And so they would have 300 stars in the 12 constellations in the northern hemisphere and 300 more in the stars for the constellations in the southern hemisphere. We tend to only think of the, the sun signs as the constellations, but there's constellations that go around the whole of the earth. And the people that are on the bottom half of the earth, because the earth is round and not flat, the people that are on the bottom half of that navigate by a different set of stars. They, they can see some of ours at some points, but it is well in the northern horizon and is hardly visible for them, as where the southern horizon is much more so. So they have their set of 300, we have... Our set of 300 seems to be what is being implied here to me. Uh, but that's the first time I've seen it really, I mean, outside of here. That I've never seen it outside of here divided in quite that way. And I would be very much interested if somebody knows out of hand 
whether or not that is that is an actual thing, whether there are 300 stars that make up the, the constellations, that would be an interesting piece of knowledge to hold. And when universal law was set up and the goals that gods had allotted their calling, then the Anunnaki, the erstwhile fallen, opened their mouths to speak to Marduk. Now that if you freed now that you have freed us and remitted our labor, how shall we make a return for this? Let us build a temple and call it the inn of rest by night. Now, it's important to note here, the inn of rest by night can be the establishment of day and night, right? We get the moon, we get the tidal forces, we get the set of the orbit of the earth here. Uh, as far as I can tell. And there we will sleep at the season of the year, at the great festival when we, from the assembly, and we will build altars for him, we will build the Paraku, the sanctuary. When Marduk held, heard this, his face shone like a broad day. Tall Babel Tower, it shall be built as you desire. Bricks shall be set in molds, and you shall name it Paraku, the sanctuary. The Anunnaki gods took up the tools one whole year long, and they set bricks in molds. And by the second year, they had raised its head as Azaglia. Azaglia? Azagila. Isagila. Isagila? It towered the earthly temple, the symbol of infinite heaven. I'm sorry. And inside were the lodgings for Marduk and Enlil and Yah. Majestically, he took his seat in the presence of them all, where the head of the ziggurat looked down to the, to the foot. And when the buildings that were was finished, the Anunnaki built themselves chapels. Then all came together and Marduk set out the banquet. This is Babylon, dear city of the gods, your beloved home. The length and breadth are yours to possess, enjoy it. It is your own. And when all the gods sat down together, there was wine and feasting and laughter. And after the banquet, the beautiful Isagila, they performed the liturgy from which the universe receives its structure. The occult is made plain, and through the universe, gods are assigned their places. Okay, that's, that's interesting. <clears throat> Inside the city, the gods, right? So we're having the personified falling angels become the gods really here. This seems to be the, you are no longer gods but above, but now you're gods here, and you're personifying the planets on earth, apparently. But they sit down together, and there's a wine and feasting and laughter. And after the banquet, Asagila, um, there it is. So the gods took up tools one whole year long, They sat in, and they raised up its head which is a tower, an earthly temple, the, the symbol of infinite heaven, Babel Tower. I strongly feel like this might be an insert, but then again, that was a myth that was incorporated, right? And so this could be pre-destruction of the world at the last 12,000 year disaster cycle. Uh, something that was there, the, the cursing of our tongues and the scattering of our peoples and the destruction of everybody, all seems to be tied together with the galactic current sheet coming in and great change being wrought. And This may be a true and honest recording of that, and it may not be a true and honest recording of that. It's probably not a true and honest recording of that, right? It may probably even have some of the greater details down, but like I like until we actually meet non biological beings, which I absolutely believe are possibilities, like not biological, like non human entities outside of the realm of terrestria, right? The things that we think of as this planet. It could be angels that were bound here, absolutely. It could be off world creatures. I don't know until we get to sit down and talk to them. Uh, so I hold both possibilities as equally plausible. And so what happened in Babel, I believe, was prior to the destruction, like the, the great destruction of 12,000 years ago, as opposed to the mini destruction of 6,000 years ago. And so this, to me, screams of that time.
that this is a recording of that time before the casting out of Eden. All right, so, and inside were the lodgings for Marduk and Enlil and Yah. Majestically, he took a seat in the presence of them all, where the head of the ziggurat looked down at the foot. So inside of this tower were lodgings for Marduk, Enlil, and Yah. And Yah. Marduk appears to be personified as Earth. Yah seems to be personified as the, the sun. And Enlil seems to be personified as kind of like life change and knowledge, as far as I can tell. Like a, a god of growing and knowing. <clears throat> I could be wrong. Y'all can correct me down below. We'll discuss that. When the buildings was finished, the Anunnaki built themselves chapels, and then they all came together, and Marduk set out the banquet. This is Babylon, dear city of the gods, your beloved home. The length and breadth are ours. Possess it. Enjoy it. It is your own. And then the gods sat down together, and there was wine and feasting and laughter. And after the banquet with the beautiful Asagila, in the beautiful Asagila, they performed the liturgy from which the universe receives its structure. The occult, which means hidden, that's what occult means, is made plain. And through the universe, gods are assigned their places. So, once the gods took residence in the tower, it became a place where the occult was made plain. This could very well be a reason for God to scatter the peoples. This, this very well could fit that, right? If you have gods making the occult plane in this thing it could it can cause later problems well, and through the universe gods are assigned in their places and that is the gods of planets and stars not the gods of these personified beings on here and when the 50 great gods had sat down with the seven who who designed the immutable nature of things they raised up 300 into heaven and it was then too that Enlil lifted the bow of Marduk and laid it in front of them. He also lifted the net. They praised the workmanship now that they saw the intricacy of the net and the beauty of the bow. This appears to be talking about the, the span of the heavens, right? The bow of Marduk is the actual firmament that somebody's going to take to mean a flat earth. But it's the division of the waters above and the waters below is the bow. Because what you can see is in a bow. Then they can't see a circle. They didn't have the opportunity to see that the earth is a globe. And they saw the intricacy of the net. And the net is the stars. And he saw the beauty of the bow, which was the, the sky, right? The bow goes all the way around you. Oh. And Anu lifted the bow and kissed it, and he said before all the gods, This is my daughter, and this was the naming of the bow. One is for Longwood, two is for Rainbow, three is for Starry Bow, glittering above. And Starry Bow was a god among gods. Now, I'm not sure what Longbow, Longwood means here, right? Rainbow, I'm assuming, means rainbow, and which would be the rain and the cycle of the day. And Starry Bow would be the night, but I'm not sure what Longwood is. I, I don't know. Maybe that is being daylight and no rain. I don't know. And when Anu had announced the bow's triple destiny, maybe that is. That would fit, right? Why would it be long wood, though? That doesn't really make sense. Maybe it's a long burning torch. Who knows? And when Anu had pronounced the bow's triple destiny, he lifted up the king's throne and set Marduk above in the gods' assembly. Among themselves, they uttered an execration by oil and water, prickling their throats to abide its fate on pain of death. They ratified his authority as king of kings, lord of the lords of universe. Anshar praised him. He called him Asar Lahu, Lahi, the name that is first, the highest name. Asar Luhi, Asar Luhi, Asar Luhi. That's an interesting one. We will wait and listen. We will bend and worship his name. The word is the last appeal. His writ will run from the zenith to the pit. All glory to the sun, our avenger. His empire has no end. Shepherd of men, he has made them his creatures to the last of time. They must remember 
He shall command hecatombs for the gods. He shall command food for the fathers, and cherish the sanctuary. Where the odor of incense and whisper of liturgy echo on the earth the customs of heaven, black-headed men will adore him on earth, and the subjected shall remember their God. At his words they shall worship the goddess. Let offering and foods not fail, for gods and goddesses at his command. Let them serve the gods at his command. Work their lands, build their houses. Let black-headed men serve the gods on earth without remission. Wow, as for us, in the multitude of his names, he is our God. Let us hail him in his names. Let us hail him in his 50 names, one God. Okay, now, I, I'm going to read this, but like, this, I don't understand why this is so much different than the other one, unless the first one was including this information that is very, fairly plain, and that was for any of the reasons that academia, academia tends to use. Right? But this is all pretty much about Marduk, who is the earth at this point. He is personified as the earth. Marduk is one, he is son of the sun, he is first, the sunburst. Pasture and pool and the buyers full, torrents of rain that hammered the enemy. Most shining one, son of the sun, the gods are walking always in the flame of his light. He created man a living thing, to labor forever, and gods go free. To make, to break, to love, to save, to Marduk all power and praise. Marduk is two, Maruka is two, hammering out the whole creation to ease the gods in tribulation. Marutuku is three. He praises a herd on every hand, the armed child who shields the land. Barashaka Ushu is fourth, who stood at need to bridle earth. His stoop, spirit stoops, his heart is love. Lugal de Merarankia is five, king of the cosmos. Over the universe he is acclaimed. By that great company his wrath had shamed, almighty God. Nari is sixth, the deliverer. He is our conscience for once. In our trouble he brought us peace and a safe haven. Anunnaki, Igigi, from the pit. And in heaven, hearing his name, secretly quake. Asaradulu, Asaralulu, is seven, the great magician. This title came from Anu. In time of great peril, the good leader. By the deadly duel, he fetched them rest. Namtilaku, now Namtilaku, is eight. In the shadow of death, he discovered life. It was as thought they were made, all new. As it was as thought they were made, all new. Conjured from death at his word, until the reckless rout submit to his will. Namru is nine. Gods go a walking in the furnace of his beauty. Voices of older days have spoken. Laham, Lamu, Lahamu, and Shar have spoken. Each of them uttered three names. They said to the children, Three names he has from each of us. Three names he needs from you. As once before in Sinan, in Ubashukana, at the place of decision, the young gods eagerly walk to talk together. He is our hero, our son, our avenger. We will praise the name of our defender. They sat down together to shape his destiny, and all of them chanted his names in the sanctuary. And that's where this one ends. <clears throat> so we have a listing out of names here, right? Mar we have Marduk, we have Ma Maruka, Marotuku, Barashakushu, Lugo de Merenkia, Nari, Asarul, Asaruludu, Namteleku. Or Namro. So we have nine names that we haven't really heard before. We've heard one. Marduk is the only one we really heard. This is bringing them out of left field. It is unkept verified in the other one. So it really does throw me off a little bit not knowing where this came from. Oh, I wish I had the actual text and I could actually read the Sumerian writing, but I can't. So, oh. This seems to be, though, talking about who holds sovereignty over the land, right? This is Marduk is the actual planet itself and the one who made the creation, as well as number six is the deliverer. Uh, our conscience 
and the the Anaki, Anunnaki and the Agigi. So this, I don't know. It, it's it's quite a confusing thing. He created man to labor for him. That is Marduk. But other records of this doesn't create Marduk as being the one that created the man. That was Enki in uh, conjunction with his sister, right? So, And then Maruku is hammering out the whole of creation. So that seems to be the creative process or the two working together to ease the gods who were wobbling. Remember, uh, we talked about Tiamat and Kingu coming in and all of that. So I don't know, there's a, there's a whole lot in here that I would like to be better educated on. If you have a better understanding of it, definitely let me know down below. Uh, and then you have Mauru Tuku, whose praises are heard on every hand. The armed child who shields the land. Okay, so that is the third of the, the three. You have Marduk, Maruka, and Marduk seems to be the planning, the formation, and the creation of man. And then... Maruka maybe is everything outside of it. And then three is the defense of the innocent, maybe. But it's a child who's defending the land, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> and I, I like we're trying to read sense into mythology and poems, right? But most of the time it does make a good bit of sense. Barashakushu is fourth, who stood at need to bridle the earth. That seems to be... The gathering together, his spirit stoops, and his heart, heart is love. Lugu, Lugu Demarankia, the king of the cosmos. Over the universe he is acclaimed. By that great company his wrath had shamed. Yeah, I'm not going to go back through all of them. Like, It seems to be a breakdown of something that we are not really privy to. Right, This wasn't part of the narrative that we've been put in. Like even the Anunnaki and the Watchers were only briefly hit on in the first five tablets. It was not really expounded upon here. We're going to get into the seventh tablet in just a minute. So we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. We are back with the seventh tablet. And again, we're going to read the one on the left, and then we'll talk about the one on the right. They are, again, quite different. And so, Oasari Marduk, bestower of plant planting, founder of sowing, creator of grains and plants, who caused the green herb to spring up. Oh, Asaro Alim Marduk, who is revered in the, revered in the house of council, who aboundeth in council. The gods paid homage. Fear took hold upon them. O Asaru Alemanuda, Marduk, the Mighty One, the Light of the Father who begat him, who directed the decrees of Anuabel and Yah. He was their patron to be ordained there. He, whose provision is abundance, goeth forth. Tutu, Marduk, is he who created them anew. Should their wants be pure, then they are satisfied. Should he make an incantation, then they are the gods. Then are the gods appeased. <coughs> Should they attack him in anger, he withstandeth their onslaught. Let him therefore be exalted, and in the assembly of the gods let him. None of the gods can rival him. 15 Tutu Marduk is Zikunia, the life of the host of the gods, who established for the gods the bright heavens. He set them on their ways, and ordained their path. Never shall his deeds be forgotten among men. Tutu has Zazag, Zigzag, Thirdly, they named the bringer of purification, the god of the favoring breezes, uh, the lord of hearing and mercy, the creator of fullness and abundance, the founder of plenteousness, who increaseth all that is small. In sore distress we felt his favoring breeze. Let them say, let them pay reverence, let them bow in humility before him. Tutu, as Aga Azag, may... Mankind fourthly magnify, the Lord of pure incantation, the quickener of the dead, who had re who had mercy upon the captive gods, who removed the yoke from upon the gods as enemies. For their forgiveness did he create mankind. 
the merciful one, with whom it is to bestow life. May his deeds endure. May they never be forgotten. In the mouth of mankind, whom his hands have made, Tutu has mu azak. Filth, fifthly, his pure incantation may their mouth proclaim, who, through his pure incantation, hath destroyed all the evil ones. Sagzu, Marduk, who knoweth the heart of the gods, who seek through the innermost part the evil doer, he hath not caused forth to go forth with him. Founder of the assembly of the gods, who, their heart, <clears throat> subduer of the disobedient, director of righteousness, who rebellion and Tutu as Zisi, the who put an end to anger, who Tutu as Sukur, thirdly, the destroyer of the foe, who put their plans to confusion, who destroyed all the wicked, let them. There is a gap here of sixty lines, but somewhere along the lost lines belong the following fragments. Who he created, he named the four quarters of the world. Mankind he created, and upon him understanding, the mighty one, Agil, the creator of the earth, Zulumu, the giver of counsel and of whatsoever, Mumu, the creator of Mulio, the heavens, who for Gisku, Lat, who brought the gods to naught, the chief of all lords, supreme as his might, Lugal, Durama, the king of the band of gods, the lord of the rulers, <clears throat> who is exalted in royal habitation, who among the gods is gloriously supreme, Adu Nana, the counselor of Yah, who created the gods his father, unto the path whose majesty no god can ever attain, Indun Azag, be made it known, pure as his dwelling, the of those without understanding is Lugala Duzaga, Duzaga, supreme as his might, there in the midst of Tiamat, of the battle. Here follows the better preserved ending. The star, <clears throat> which shineth in the heavens, may he hold the beginning and the future, may they pay homage unto him, saying, he who has forced his way through the midst of Tiamat without resting. All right, my voice is just about dead on the bottom end, so I'm going to take it up higher. Let his name be Nibiru, the Caesar of the midst. For the stars of heaven he upheld the paths. He shepherded all the gods like sheep. He conquered Tiamat. He troubled and ended her life. In the future of mankind, when the days grow old, may this be heard without ceasing. May it hold sway forever. Since he created the realm of heaven and fashioned the firm earth, the Lord of the world, the Father Bell, hath called his name. This title, which all the spirits of heaven proclaimed, did Yah hear, and his spirit was rejoiced, and he said, He whose name his fathers had made glorious, even be shall be even as I, his name shall be Yah. The binding of all my decrees shall he control, all my commands shall he make known. By the name of fifty did the great gods proclaim his fifty names. They made his path preeminent. So this is placing into, into power over everyone Marduk. It is giving him all kinds of names and assigning to them Marduk. That seems to be a bit of a justification, right? That seems to be a justified consolidation of a lot of different names into one name. I don't know how valid it was. I wasn't there. We don't have the clearest of records. All right, now we're going to run through seven, or the the left hand or the right handed tablet here. This one tends to add its own flavor, so keep that in mind. The hymn continued. Asaru cultivates the song, conducts water by small channels for seed time for shooting green harvest grain. Now this is Asari Asaru. In charge of planting and growing, it seems to be the same, but this one says that the Asari is Marduk, and this one says that Marduk is Asari above, right? Asuralim, the gods in fear and hope, a council turn to him. He is the light, Asuralim Nuna, light of the glory of his father. He is the law of Anu and Enlil and Yah. He is fullness and plenty, 
the gods grow fat on his bounty. This is earth, right? This is all the different personifications of the earth. This appears to be an earth-centered worship. Tutu is life renewed that Sweden's the sanctuary. Should Wrath Rout once more rouse up in their company, he teaches them to repeat the charm that lulls to sleep. He has no peer in that assembly. Zuikakina lives in every god. He is the skies in their happiness. He holds them to their bliss. Below the clouds of dull men, remember him. For this is Ziku, the kernel of life, sweet breath of grace, abundance, benevolence, believable wealth, changing famine to plenty. We breathe this sweetness in our extremity. We will speak of the mighty. We ill will sing of the song of his glory. Agaku, the love of the wrath. The living words, he quickens the dead. He, he pitied fallen gods, remitted their labor, laid on the adversary. For your relief, he has made mankind. His words endure. He is kind. He has power of life. It is in the mouth of black-headed men who remember him. But also this is Tuku. They mutter his anathemas, who overwhelmed evil with mysterious words. As Shazu, he made the heart. He seized the, the marrow. No sinner escapes his scrutiny. He has formed the assembly and spreads his protection. He oversees justice and subdues rebellion. He has rooted out malice. Wherever he goes, the wrong and the right stand separate. As one who reads the heart, this too is Zisi, a name that is hushed, that hushed the rebel horde. Out of the body of older gods drove frozen fear, freezing his fathers. For Suhrim is the missile that extinguished them, the abject band that cringed from him, their schemes forestalled, the flying in the winds. Be glad, you gods, be glad. He is Suhugurum, Suhugurum, who can destroy, but is an open court to hear all causes. Old gods created new, the enemy erased, and to the children's children nothing is left of them, or what they did. His name alone answers the summons of the world. Zarim, the destroyer, lives. Iniquity is dead. He has found out the enemy when the gods fled. He brought them home, each to his own. By this name is known. Zargurum, savior, destroyer. Terrible title. His enemy fallen as if it were on the field of battle. In Bililu, health to the gods and wealth. He called their names. He called the hecatombs roast in flames. He planned the pastures, sank wells, and freed the pat waters. He is Epidum, gathering moisture, for with sky and earth to wash down the furrows. Watered plowland with sluices, with dams and dikes and irrigation. In Bililu is hemmed as Google. In the orchards of the orchards of the gods, he watches the canals. He fills the storeroom with sesame and mare and abundant grain. And he is Hegel. Heaping up wealth for all the people. Into the world he sends sweet rain and greenness. As Sirsir, he seizes the, seized the carcass. He carried off chaos meshed in his snare. And heaped on her mountains. Overseer of the world and faithful shepherd. Where his brow is furrowed like a shock of hair the corn. Waves up. Where his, where his brow is furrowed like a shock of hair the corn waves up. Where the vast ocean rises in anger, he vaults her as a bridge, thrown over the place where duel was fought. He is also called Mala, and many other. The sour sea is his skiff, who captains the hulk. The heap of grain is gill, barley and best sesame doled out for the land's good. There is This is Gila, and the unquenchable fire, the tempers of the eternity in their dwellings. For their safety is braced as the hoop holding a barrel. This is Agilnoma, who from the tearing surf creates over the water's cloud to char guard the unchanging sky. Zulum cuts into clay, allots the acres, grants the ties. This is Mumu, the creative word, the life of the universe, that ties back into the other tablets. Gishnumanab, the seed, created races of men from the world's quarters, from the wreck of Tiamat's rout, from the stuff of fallen gods he made mankind. He is Lugo Labdubur, who came as king to confront chaos. Her forces wither before him, for he is steadfast, 
The foundations are firm in every direction. Papa Le Gueno, Lord of Lords, most sublime God, he rules his brothers. Lugal do Roma, at the navel of the world, where heaven and earth are held by the cord, where the high gods gather, his greatness ranks higher than all. Aradunna, counselor, with his father Yah, peerless in his sovereign manner, he created gods. Dumu Duku is the bright mountain. Dumuduku, the presence in the temple and the place of decision where nothing is decided, except with him. Lugalalana, he is strong with the charge of heaven, conspicuous among gods, even more than Anshar, who called him out, called one from all. Lugalaluga, King Death, he took them a crisis at the maelstrom, the encompassing intellect, the full, mid full stretched. Irikingu, in the battle fury, he bore away the bungler. He created law and now rules creation. Kinma, advisor and leader, his name strikes terror in gods, the roar of the tornado. Esizikur, up there he sits in the chapel of prayer at the great festival. When the gods all come, presents are given, duties imposed. Unless he is by nothing, unless he is by nothing is created. Subtle or beautiful, but when he would, man was made in the quarters of the world. Without him, the gods would not know their hour. <clears throat> he is Gibble, the furnace to which the point is tempered, lightnings forged. The weapons of war against Tiamat, the gods will never sound the reaches of his mind. His name is also Adu, Adadu. Wet weather and the welcome storm, the kindly roar of thunder hovering over the earth. After the storm, the clouds break up. At his word and under heaven. All people daily have their bread from him. Ashharu guides the good guides the gods of fate, and all the gods he guards. As Nubiru he projected the stars. In their orbit, the wandering gods obey the laws of passage. Nubiru at the cent still center is the god they adore. Of this story one they say, He who once crossed the filament tirelessly now is the nub of the universe, and all other gods hold course on him, he shall fold like the gods in a flock, and conquer Tiamat. Let her life be narrow and short, let her recede into the future. Far off from mankind till time is old, keep her forever absent. Because he had molded matter and created the aether, his father named him Belmatati, the lord of this world. And with his own name he signed him when the gods of heaven ended to him. Now too, Yah, having heard, rejoiced. The great gods have glorified my son, he is Yah. Names by my name he will execute my will and dictate my rights. Hansha, with fifty names the god proclaimed him. Hansha, with fifty names, with fifty they named him, the one who is first and fares farthest. So, to me... All references to God is to the creator of all things, who is God and is beyond personification within the universe. This is the explanation, in my opinion, to man creation. That appears to be, to me, what is mostly going on here. And I'm going to try and do this while we're still talking so I don't have to stop it again. Uh, it appears to me to be... Uh, the gods, whoever they happen to be, relaying to these black-haired men what happened. And to the best of their knowledge, helping them to understand how the universe works. That all things are created by a creator. That all things are held in place by a creator. That I hold to be an absolute truth. And so, it's easy for me to wrap my head around that this is not necessarily the God of the Bible, but it might be referencing a God who is every bit as valid as the Bibles, and that's going to set some people off. But now we're going to go ahead and read up the epilogue. This is the end, right? This is where it stops. So, oh, these tablets at least. Let them, i.e. the names of Marduk, be held in remembrances, and let the first man proclaim them. Let the wise and the understanding consider them together. Let the father repeat them and teach them to his son. Let them be in the ears of the pastor and the shepherd. 
Let a man rejoice in Marduk, the Lord of the gods, that be may, that be may cause his land to be fruitful, and that he himself may have prosperity. His word standeth fast, his command is unaltered. The utterance of his mouth hath no God ever annulled. He gazed in anger, he turned not his neck. When he is wroth, no God can withstand his indignation. Why does his heart brought as a compassion, the sinner and evil doer in his presence? They received instruction, they spake before him, unto the Marduk, may the gods, may they, his name, they took and. Okay, so here it breaks from what has happened so far, and this guy gives a little bit extra that the other one doesn't. Another version. Note, strictly speaking, the text is not a creation legend, though it gives a variant form of the principal incident in the history of the creation according to the Enuma Elish. Here, the fight with the dragon did not precede the creation of the world, but took place after men had been created and cities had been built. The, men, the city sighed men. They uttered lamentation, they. For their lamentation there was none to help, for their grief there was none to take them by the hand. Who was the dragon? Tiamat was the dragon. Bell in heaven hath formed. Fifty capsu. A capsu is the space that can be covered in two hours travel, six or seven miles. In his length, one capsu in his height. Six cubits in his mouth, twelve cubits in his. Twelve cubits is the circuit of his ears. For the space of sixty cubits he is he, a bird. In water, nine cubits deep, he drag. He raiseth his tail on high, all the gods of heaven. In heaven the gods bowed themselves down before the moon god. The border of the moon god's robe they hastily grabbed. Who will go and slay the dragon and deliver the broad land from? And become king over. Go, Tishu, slay the dragon. And deliver the broad land from. And become king over. Thou hast sent me, O Lord the raging creatures of the river, but I know not thee of the dragon. The rest of the verse and upper part of the reverse of the tablet are wanting. Reverse. And opened his mouth and spake unto the gods, stir up the cloud and storm and tempest, and seal thy life shall thou set before thy face. Thou shalt grasp it and thou shalt slay the dragon. He stirred up cloud and storm and tempest. He set the seal of his life before his face. He grasped it and slew the dragon. And for three years and three months, one day and one night, the blood of the dragon flowed. <clears throat> I don't think necessarily that this is two separate accounts, or that this is the same account, that it, the chronology is off on. What is entirely possible is that this second part, where Tiamat returns and the dragon and all of this, can very well be the repeat of the 12,000 year disaster cycle, which is a trackable thing, which you can you can see is about to re return now 12,000 years after this. And so, to me, this lends credence to the actual overall more than just the overall by itself. Right? Because I think that this was a recollection after the fall of Babel. This was one group recording something somehow, whether that was dictated to them from someone else or just transferred with them when they fled or however it happened to work. I think that there was people here to witness the last destruction, the big one, the Eden event, and not many people made it out. I don't think many people will make it out of the next one, but there was also a mid-level event where it happened... 6,000-ish years ago where a floodish thing happened. And so we have trackable things happening on trackable patterns. This lends credence, credence to that, that they, they witnessed something else that was not necessarily what had already been recorded and that's why the timeline seems wrong. If you don't believe and you refuse to conceive that there could possibly be a civilization that existed prior to our current understanding of civilization. Then you will rationalize this in a timeline, whereas I don't have that problem. I believe that there was a different uh, 
there was a different timeline than the one that we currently understand. I believe that there were people. They didn't have to be in flying saucers or airplanes. They were just advanced. They were advanced to the point of knowledge where they could build a tower and that it was really torn down. When I did my Bible study, I talked in Genesis how I think that timeline was actually wrong and that Babel was before the flood. So, anyway, let's go ahead and wrap up the epilogue over here on this. This is, remember the titles of Marduk. Rulers will recite them. Wise men and sages debate them. Father and son repeat them. Even shepherds and herdsmen shall hear them. Let men rejoice in Marduk, the prince of the gods. Man and earth will prosper, for his rule is strong, his command is firm. None of the gods can alter his will. Where his eyes have fixed, they do not falter. There is no god that can bear his anchor. His intellect is vast and his benevolence. Sinners and such trash he will blast his presence. Not so the wide teacher to whose words we listen. He wrote it down. He saved it for a time to come. Let the Agigi, who built his dwelling, let the god speak. This was the song of Marduk, who defeated Tiamat and attained serenity. And so, we finish up the tablets of uh, the Sumerian uh, Enuma Elish. This was two translations that I found. They happened to be conveniently located together. I cannot verify the veracity of anything, but a lot of things that we discuss seem to make sense. Some of them don't make sense. I hope to discuss these things, right? These are the types of things that are up for discussion. These are not... Like, these are all some kind of personal belief. We don't have confirmation that any of this actually happened. We don't have any confirmation that we even have the names right. We don't have any confirmation that anything that we believe about it is right. And so we speculate. We talk. We, we try to fit it into our current knowledge. We try to figure out what they might have been thinking about. Because they were rational men, too. And by men, I don't mean just men, but... They were rational humans just as much as we are. If you pulled them from their point in time, 12,000, 13,000 years ago, and you brought them here, and you gave them a phone, right? Within a week, you can train them to get onto Facebook and understand. Maybe not the language, but you can definitely get memes over, right? You can definitely train them to use a computer program to feed themselves. You can train them to... To use our modern tools, they can comprehend that. They may not fully get it in a week, but you give them a couple of years, and I bet they could. Because men, for the most part, have been fairly simple. We, we take the knowledge, we assimilate it, and we use it as a tool going forward. I think that that is something that has existed throughout history, but that we lost a large chunk of it in a great destruction a very long time ago. And it took us a very long time to rise back to a level of progression in civilization. I think that's what happened to us and that not the the whole ooh, ooh, caveman, ooh, ooh, fire. I don't think that happened. I think that was kind of, I think that there was some type of divine intervention, whether that was Anunnaki or God himself that I, I believe God himself put us here. But whether or not you believe that, whether you believe it was Anunnaki doing genetic manipulation, or whether you believe God himself created everybody from Adam and Eve, or whether you believe that a bird man came, or a bird woman came across the waters and helped raise the earth up, like, whatever your personal belief was, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we are seeking truth, and we are seeking the creator, and we are seeking God, so. Hopefully I brought a little bit of enlightenment in this rambling thing that we are doing here. I don't know where we're going next. We're wrapping up the Enuma Elish, and we'll see where Curiosity brings me next on the next issue of Tip Pitcast. Uh, sooner or later, we will be having guests to discuss these things, but I want to make sure I've got a firm foundation of what I'm talking about first. So we're going to review these texts. We're going to go through these things and read them out loud. We're going to discuss them out loud, and you are free to comment down below. Anything I get wrong, I am open to new knowledge. I really am. But hopefully I brought a little bit of enlightenment and not too much confusion, because that is the goal to the crew. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me and I am praying for you every single day. Until next time, I love you. You're perfect, whole, and complete just the way that you are. And this has been Pitt State. Peace.